Good boy. Never touched a human in his life. A lot of energy. You know, we ask a horse to do a lot in a short period of time. There we go. We're asking them to change the way they think, their natural instinct for flight. And not only change that, but respond to us that is initially perceived as a predator. I'm in here for a domestic violence assault. And I was a very angry man when I came to prison. Uh, I got locked up. 18 years ago for uh, uh, a murder I committed. Uh, I call it self-defense. The lay people said it wasn't. We're the oldest state prison in Arizona. Right now in the, in the wild, there are maybe 58 to 60,000 wild horses. And it's much more than the range will support. So Bureau of Land Management, when they have too many horses for a specific range, they'll, they'll gather them and they'll get them to a facility to find homes for. I used to call this my morning therapy. The best trainers have no training experience. Well. Because some guys with horse experience aren't teachable. So the inmates now in the program, the majority had zero horse experience. Some had zero animal experience. There wasn't many cowboys where I grew up. This job would have been hard to fathom, but here I am. I, I never even had a puppy. I have seen goldfish and people having fishes and people taking on pets. It just was never my thing. When we first got him, we, we couldn't get near him. You gonna trust me with your foot this morning? Huh? Good boy. Here it is a, a year plus later, and I really couldn't imagine life without horses in it, somehow, in some form, or some fashion. <laughs> Somebody's gonna fall in love with her. She's my baby. They come out of the wild with certain behaviors that were key to their survival. These uh, inmates, a lot of them come in with certain things that they have picked up right or wrong that, uh, that they felt they needed to, to survive or, or function. They're going from, from wild, if you will, to, to gentle. There you go, good. Some of the guys that are in for the, what we would consider the more serious crimes and the more violent crimes, I think they have more to relate to. When these horses first come in, their problem is trust. When I first come into prison, that was my problem. 18 years ago, I, it probably wouldn't have worked because my, atti my attitude wasn't right. I, I had a, 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 for lack of better words, a street mentality. I don't think I'd have had the patience. He just being angry this morning. He has his days. Now this is what you get now. Now I'm just gonna stand here. <laughs> What I learned from my horses is patience, love, and caring, and trust. Humans hold a grudge. Horses don't hold a grudge. The inmate's not just in there saying, I'm going to teach this horse how to change, but the inmate needs to understand I need to learn from the horse on how to change it. You know, when I got locked up, it's like, you know, because I believe in God. And, and I asked him, I said, God, you know, give me the silver lining in this whole thing so I can accept this and, and, and be okay with it. And this is the silver lining in my sentence, is this job. You're not breaking the horse, you're softening the horse. We're not just throwing on cowboy boots and a cowboy hat and bucking them out. We'll start a horse just going in a circle and that horse is gonna have a natural tendency to run and start getting that horse to turn inside. Every time the horse turns inside or does what we want, I, my emphasis is that we take all the pressure off. Sometimes it comes along quicker. I've, I've had them within, I've had them within 15 minutes walk from one end of the, well, no, let me rephrase that. 
One time in my life, I've had them 15 minutes, this horse went from one side of the pen to the other. And came and put his nose on my chest. The method of training is referred to primarily as horse whispering. Good for you, good boy. I think the reason we say that is because the trainers are whispering. And why should my heart The trainers are speaking softly, but it's to keep us soft as well as have that, that gentle approach. You like that one, huh? It almost sounds like you're doing something a little mystical. You're whispering something. Good for you, good boy. Uh, and in reality, you're just trying to keep that horse calm. What we really are doing is finding a way to say yes to the horse. Never had one bite me. I've had them nip at my shirt. They're just trying to figure me out. Uh, and I've had them pull my hat off, so I don't want them to pull my nice hat off. And after a while, the horse figures out, oh, every time the pressure goes away, I must have done something right. He can be in there for five, 10 minutes, and that horse is squaring up with him, walking up, smelling his hand. <laughs> uh, the old way of training horses pretty much was pressure, 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 pressure. You get a saddle, bridle on a horse, you get on, and, and the horse typically is going to either run or explode, especially the wild horses, and, and it was all corrective. This, this is all progressive. Bottom line is you're not gonna force a horse to do anything you don't wanna do the way we train out here. And once you learn how to recognize the body language of a horse, they, can, they talk to you in, in basically in so many body language words that tell you, hey, you know, you're pushing me too far, slow down. You know, I'm trying to figure out what you're asking. It's a spiritual connection because you're, you're pretty much listening to them, but you have to listen not with your ears because they don't say anything. You kind of listen with your heart. Oh, well, now you want to kiss. No, I don't kiss. <laughs> I don't like kisses. <laughs> Wild horses, just in, in general, there's a certain romantic attachment we have, and, and I think rightly so. They are very much symbols of the American West. Mustangs, for one thing, they're, just, they're, they're amazing animals that have learned to survive in the wild. They have real diverse genetics. Uh, there are some of them in the northern areas that came in with the, the wagon trains. The, the, the Native Americans had um, horses that, some of those had a Spanish uh, uh, genetics or Spanish lineage. You had the cavalry come in with horses that had Morgan uh, influence. Uh, you had ranchers that come in, their horses got away or they turned them loose. So o over a period of time, just survival of the fittest, you have this uh, strong genetic strain that begins to emerge where they, they have strong bones, strong hooves. This is the cream of the crop right here. You see their attitude before and then you see their attitude in about a couple Guys, months. Guys, be, be picking names out of, that, out of that list. Don't be coming up with these innovative names. <laughs> that, that nobody knows what they mean. And, <laughs> and once I know what they mean, I don't want to know. So none of those names. So. Nice horse names. Nice horse names. <laughs> nice horse names. I've had inmates come up and uh, say, I, I never had on the outside, I never had success and saw something through to fulfillment. I always took shortcuts. It really is a big success when they are able to see this horse come in. Nobody's touched it as far as the horse willingly allowing somebody to touch it. And to have that horse responding and then progressing on up to saddle train where they're riding it through obstacles. And uh, it, it, it is really amazing to see. Anytime you came in a pen, she would keep that head away from you and swing her behind to you. But with a little love and care and understanding, not forcing her, letting her take her time, letting her figure it out, letting her understand that I'm not trying to hurt her. Now I can take this and slip it right on in. She has no problem with it. I, I'm pretty good at it. I've actually found something I'm pretty decent at. I can make a living doing this. I have no other trade, you know, 
and I could, I could actually get out of here and make a living training horses. If, if I had to choose between these inmates leaving here with a great career or great character, I would choose character in a heartbeat. It's a sense of accomplishment. And for some people, they might look at it as, you know, it's small and insignificant. But for somebody who, let's say, didn't believe in himself, to actually get that type of response from an animal, I don't know, it does something to you. It, 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 it validates the hard work that you put in. Not just in training the horse, but the hard work you put in itself, getting to this point. You know, I'm not a kid. I'm 40, I'll be 46 years old this year. And to finally say, okay, you have something to stand on. You're not as worthless as you believe you are. For me, that's, that's an accomplishment. Yeah, it's huge, it's big. You know, and I don't take it lightly. I mean, they, they, they all come in with, with, with baggage and it, it doesn't excuse what they did, but you get insight into maybe why they, why they did those things. And what happens over a period of time is they begin to understand they don't have to go back out and live that way. And I've learned through working with horses how to step back. On the streets, I didn't know how to step back. I didn't know how to stop and say, okay, enough's enough, I'm gonna leave and I'm gonna think about what's going on, you know, and, and, and why my anger's getting the best of me. And, and that's really the, the key, regardless of why they're here, I want them to understand that they can live a different way when they get out. I don't have a, a, a rehabilitation manual um, or a rehabilitation plan. It is just uh, part of the whole, whole process. And I, I want these guys to think about what they're gonna do when they get out. If we let these horses prove themselves, why can't we let the inmates prove themselves as well? We all need each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we need them too, huh? I need you too. Or else you wouldn't be here, right?